Okay. So, in the previous class, uh, I give a small problem uh, for you to work out. So, I am not sure whether you have done it or not, but uh, I would like to spend some time uh, now to sol solve that problem for your sake. Okay. Let me quickly repeat the problem that I gave. You said that uh, there is a box, there are uh, four boxes. Box 1, it consists of uh, 2000 items out of which 1900 items were good and uh, 100 were defective. Box 2, it had 300 good items, 200 defective items. Box uh, 3, it had uh, 900 good items, 100 defective items and last box, box 4, it also had 900 good items and 100 defective items. Question that was asked was that, I mean, we select any box, any particular box at random first and then from that box, we remove just only one element. So the first question is, what is the probability that that particular element which is being removed uh, is a defective one? Okay. So, to answer that, first we see that each of the boxes, since the boxes they are chosen purely at random and there is no particular preference for a special box, maybe box 1, box 2, box 3 or box 4, the probability that I choose box 1, say B1 or B2 or B3 or B4, that is 1 by 4 because it is uniform. That means, P B1 is same as P B2 is same as P B3 is same as P B4 is equal to 1 by 4, the uniform. This is a uh, very safe assumption because there is no preference for a particular box. Okay. And then right across I can write that uh, Suppose I choose box 1, then what is the probability that the particular item that is removed from that box is a defective one? Okay, that is P B by B 1, this is equal to, now there are 2000 elements out of which only 100 are defective, right. So, probability that the particular ball, particular item which has been removed is having is defective is having a probability 100 by the total that is 2000 okay which means 0 0.05 similarly pd by b2 that is assuming that box 2 has been selected condition to the fact that b2 has been selected what is the probability that the element that is removed item that is removed is a defective one so, in this case total number of items is 500 and 200 are the defective ones. So, probability is 200 by 500 that is 0 0.4. Okay. In the same manner P d by B 4, sorry this is B 3, just a minute please. Now here total is, I mean in total we have 1000 elements and 100 are defective. So, this will be just 100 by 1000 which is 0 0.1 and 
this is identical to this. So, P d by B 4 this is again 0.1. So, the question is what is the probability that the item that is removed is defective. So, we will apply this total probability theorem. That is probability that the selected item is defective is given by that is assuming B 1 is selected the probability is P B 1 then condition to that the probability that is defective is P of D by B 1 plus P D by B 2. And we now know all these values, these are all 1 by 4. So, you can take 1 by 4 common, and these individual probabilities are 0 0.01 plus I think 0.4 plus 0.1 plus 0.1. Okay. That makes it. In fact, if you calculate it will turn out to be. So, this is the probability that the selected item is a defective one. Okay. That is the question that I had asked of you in this uh, in my previous lecture, but now I now I append another question to this that is suppose the item selected has been found to be a defective one, then what is the probability that this item has indeed been picked up from say particular box say box 1 what is the probability for that we will be using this base rule we know that So, you consider box 2, what is the probability that the ball has been removed from box 2? This we know 0.4. Question is what is the probability that I mean given that the ball that has the item that has been removed is a defective one subject to that. Now, what is the probability that the item has been picked up from box number 2 that is this probability that is equal to what? that is is equal to by what we studied earlier first if you take the multiplication this is the joint probability if you take this p d by b 2 into p b 2 there is a joint probability that box b 2 was selected and the item removed from it was defective but the joint probability is nothing but p b 2 by d into p d okay, or this is equal to nothing this side divided by p d. In fact, we have established this relation in our previous class. So, I am not speaking much on this, but roughly you can remember it like this. That is if I if you take the product of the two again you get a joint probability between uh, b 2 and d because this is b 2 by d pro probability b 2 by d and this is probability of d is the written the other way here probability d by b 2 into probability b 2 both cases we get joint probability of d and b 2. Okay. And now, these figures we know because p d has been evaluated these were given given that the box was b 2 the probability of this being defective was 0 0.4 probability of b 2 is 1 by 4 as we know. So, this is 0 0.4 into 1 by 4 divided by p d which is 0 0.1625. I think this starts out to be 0 
all right so this is the answer okay so towards the end of our previous class we had just introduced you to the concept of uh, statistical independence of events okay statistical independence of events i now try to highlight that and also discuss the various properties that are associated with this notion and i'll try to give an example also to explain it further suppose we consider two events a and b both belonging to the certain event s there is a total set s okay in terms of venn diagram you can have uh, something like this a this is b this is the overlap area there is ab all these we have studied earlier okay now question is if a and b the events are such then if i look for the probability corresponding to their intersection which means they are joint occurrence because it is here we have both a and b occurring simultaneously both are present that is joint occurrence that is pab if this is nothing but just the product of pa and pb pa is the probability of event a pb is the probability of event b then a and b will be called statistically independent okay i will try to give you the physical uh, meaning of this but before that you can see one thing you can always write pab this is always true that p a by b into p b this is always true irrespective of whether these two are statistically independent or not this we have already established this is a, this comes from the definition of the conditional probability in fact now if they are statistically independent then p a b is also given by this and since p b is non zero okay suppose we consider, we do, don't count the case of uh, p b being zero then obviously p a by b is uh, p a in fact how did we discuss i mean uh, discard this possibility of pv being zero because we are not considering any event which is an empty set that is which is an impossible event only for impossible event the corresponding probability is zero that i am not considering which means pv is a non zero positive number less than 1 okay positive real number and which means that means pa by b is same as pa that means actually that even if we first ensure that b has taken place and subject to that try to evaluate the probability of a the probability should be act the actual probability of a irrespective of the fact that b has already occurred this is the meaning and this can happen if b and a are two such physical events which have no connection between them then whether b has occurred or not if you try to evaluate the probability of a you will always get pa so pa by b is pa that is the meaning of the statistical independence of uh, a and b which by definition is written like this okay we can just look into the corresponding frequency interpretation also suppose we are conducting experiments and on n a occasions total number of trials is n small n on n a occasions a occurs sorry a b occur so number of occasions 
ok. In that case what is P A B that is simply N A B by N. Let me put an approximate sign because after all this is not the exact probability, but this is just uh, the frequency interpretation. So, N A B by N and now we know what is P A that is N A by N, what is P B that is N B by N and if these are statistically independent then it would mean it would mean this P A B we can always write it like this n uh, b then n b by n we can always write like this ok and what is n b by n that is p b ok and what is this p a by b ok but this turns out to be n a by n Okay. That means, the fact that on n b occasions b has occurred has got no impact on the probability of a occurrence. Okay. It is just repetition of what I stated using symbols earlier. So, whether b has occurred or not that is n a b by n b provided all this number of trials are large n b is large n a b by n b will turn out to be what we get as n a by n only provided B has got no connection with A that is B and A are physically and statistically independent rather. Okay, this is P B okay, and this is P A by B, but by definition P A B if they are statistically independent is equal to P A into P B which means this is P A and if this is P A that means N A by N ratio will turn out to be same as this that is if I just take n number of trials and find out total number of times n a has occurred and take this ratio whatever I will get I will get the same thing if I take n b number of trials that is trials where first it is ensured that b has taken place then find out how many times a has taken place and take the ratio I will still get the same value as I get here provided of course these are large enough that means the fact that b has occurred has got really no impact. I mean whether B has occurred or not I get the same probability of A. Then only I say that B and A are statistically independent. Okay. Then certain properties follow from this. Given that Okay, that is given that the two events A and B are statistically independent. We should have P A bar B is also written similarly. That is the two events A bar that is A complement and B they are also statistically independent. Further P A bar B bar these two also are statistically independent. Okay. It is not difficult to show this. First consider this. We know that any event B can be written as a union of two mutually exclusive sets one is a b another is a bar b if you have forgotten i just draw a venn diagram here quickly 
this is a this is b so this is a diagram okay this part is ab this part is ab and this remaining portion of b is nothing but intersection between com a complement that is there is outside a and b there only this portion will be absorbed right and these two portions are mutually exclusive so b can be written like this we have seen it already earlier okay but since they are mutually exclusive pb is nothing but okay and you have given me the fact that a and b are statistically independent which means i can write like this all right so i take this pb to the left hand side take that as common so you get now what is 1 minus p a this is nothing but this is nothing but p of a bar because we remember p of a and p of a bar the two probabilities when added their value is 1 because a and a bar when put under union they correspond to the total set there is a certain event so its probability is 1 which means p b which means p of a bar b is same as p a bar to p b all right this implies a bar and b are statistically Okay. This, this logic you can now apply again. It is given suppose that A bar and B, A bar and B, they are statistically independent, which means A bar and B complement, that is B bar, they are also statistically independent by the same argument. A bar is one event. Early it was A and B, and then complement came over A, B left, was left as it is, and now you are given this fact that a bar and b are statistically independent then keep a bar as it is complement b so you get a bar and b bar by the same development again i can say that a bar and b bar also are statistically independent just a repetition of the same argument which means Okay. Just to give an example, Cauchy-Allen experiment, where we are tossing a coin just twice in succession. So, when the head comes, I say the outcome is H, when tail comes, it is T. So, there are four possibilities, is not it? S consists of here H H, that is head first, head second, H T, that is head first, T second then T H and T T. Okay. Now, suppose you select two numbers A and B, A B
greater than 0 and a plus b 1. So, that they qualify for some probability actually. Okay. The real numbers that is given like this. Suppose you select any such pair a b and then it is given us beforehand that p of h h is nothing but a square p of h t is same as p of t h that is equal to a b okay, and p of t t is b square. Then there is no conflict because for is the total event either h h or h t or t h or t t. So, probability of the total event is what? This plus this plus this plus this a square plus a b plus a b plus b square which is a plus b whole square and a plus b being given 1 that is 1. So, that is satisfied and each probability is having value greater than 0 and less than 1 there is no problem. Suppose this is given to us. Then we consider two events. In one event, head first, that is I consider those subsets. These are outcomes mind you. This certain event has this possible outcomes, head head, head tail, tail head, tail tail. And then I can construct events by taking their forming the subsets. Suppose I now consider those case, those cases where head is first. So, I consider those subsets, that subset where uh, age comes first. Okay. So, event 1 head first okay meaning h h h t. What is the probability of event 1? Probability I can call it say p h 1, h 1 stands for say event 1 that will be what? Since they are mutually exclusive I mean these two I mean the probability of this total event will be what? See, either this can happen or this can happen, they cannot happen together, they are exclusive. So, what is the total probability? Total probability will be the probability sum of the probability for this and this, which means a square plus a b. Okay. Take a common a into within bracket a plus b and a plus b is 1, which means this is equal to a. All right. So, head first its probability is a. Okay. Similarly, we now consider uh, second event that is uh, event 2 head second meaning T h or again h h hmm. head second. So, here uh, probability of this event is P h 2 again a b plus a square take a common and you get a because a plus b is 1. All right. Question is are these two events statistically independent? From a physical sense yes, because he, whether head first or head uh, second these events you know they really physically have got no influence on each other is not it. But mathematically does it satisfy the axiom for uh, statistical independence that we can verify. So, just to check whether h 1 and h 2 are statistically independent or not, what do we do? We take the probability of the joint event h 1, h 2. Now, what is the joint event? 
you know H1 had HH and HT and H2 has TH and HH. So, they can jointly occur only in the form of HH. If both have to occur jointly, okay, then only HH can take place. Okay. So, that means this will be nothing but the probability for HH. which is equal to a square, but what is p h 1 p h 2 that is again a square we have found out that in both cases the probability is a which means these two events are statistically independent. Okay. So, so far for uh, statistical independence. Okay. So, I conclude this particular section and I will go to the following uh, topic now, but then I think it is proper that we sum up as to what we did, what we have done so far. We started in our first lecture with a description of the course, we tried to develop the need for a you know formal treatment to probability, which we did by forming some uh, probability axioms. So, we, towards that we first started with the concepts of set theory, because the theory of probability has been built around set theory okay, on a set of events. Then we established, we proposed or stated rather certain axioms of probability, basic axioms, only a few axioms need to be satisfied by the probability. And then we discussed the corollaries that come from those axioms. Okay. We took up some examples then, then uh, we moved over to something called conditional probability, then we discussed total probability, probability or yeah I mean base theorem okay. and uh, then we took up some examples to explain that and then we came to this notion of statistical independence. Okay. And the statistical independence is a very, very useful, very useful concept and very widely used concept, okay, which we will study later, which we will see later as this course uh, develops. So, this for this general definition of definition of probability. Okay. Now, I move to the concept of random variable. All right, even though we say it is variable, actually random variable is more a function than a variable, but only problem is in our day to day business, I mean we tend to lose sight of its uh, role as a function and we try to take it as a variable. So, to give uh, let me formally write Before that, let us consider this idea of a function. What is a function? Function can be continuous or discrete, but always the any function it takes basically some member of a particular set and maps it to another member of a set. The source set on which it works it is called the domain and the set which where it maps actually the domain, it is called the range. Right. For instance, we often write a function like this x of t. Now, here t could be t corresponds to a particular set, is a member of a particular set. It so happens that often this t is a member of a set of continuous, I mean t is a continuous valued parameter, means that t is a member of a set of uh, continuous valued real numbers actually, okay, there is a real line. Then for each element on the real line for each t, this x t gives us another real number, so it is that sort of a mapping, but it could have been a discrete, it could be a, a discrete parameter that is t can correspond come from a set may be finite, may be infinite of some discrete elements. This x of t is nothing but a function which works on those elements and gives you some value, value could be complex or real value or any other 
I mean uh, if, if not real complex it could be binary also ok, it can belong to any field that is the general notion of uh, function. Now, suppose in the context of our probability I say things like this that suppose we are considering an experiment ok. So, experiment has got various outcomes you consider the set of all possible outcomes that is the certain event S. Now, what I do with each outcome I assign some particular value. I say that if this outcome has taken place let the value be this much or if that outcome has taken place let the value be that much, but the values are fixed once for all. That means, if you go on conducting the experiment you keep getting new and new experimental outcomes of course, all experimental outcomes belong to that total set S, but each time you find you look at the value you see that the value that is taking place is random. So, if you have a value chart you will see various values are coming again values are pre assigned it is not that they are taking arbitrary values because you already have a set of uh, pre assigned values and whatever value you are now getting they correspond to that set only, but you are getting this a chart giving this random occurrence of these values. Here we say I mean this process of assigning a value to each experiment you can again view it in the same way as we have uh, the notion of functions that is you can say that let x it maps the set S to a set of numbers. For making our life simple we are considering real values, but it could be complex. So, S map to R physically it means x is a function which works on each element of S means each experimental outcome of S for each of these experimental outcomes this function picks up a value from R, R is the set of all real numbers ok. That means what is the domain here? that is A is a particular experimental outcome. So, I am considering all experimental outcomes belonging to S. For each outcome x of A is the function which picks up the particular outcome and gives you a value from R and the set of all values ok that forms the domain. So, x just picks up those outcomes and maps a particular outcome to a particular value in the domain. So, this x of A ideally this is called a random variable. So, actually it is a function ok, actually it is a function. Okay. So, x of a it means basically a function as I said, but you know often what happens we take x as some kind of variable in the sense that ok x equal to what x equal to ok for this we are measuring uh, we are doing some experiment we are measuring something what is the x ok next time what is the x and like that. So, x is treated most often in practice as some kind of a variable because we directly look into the value of x Actually, that is from our uh, point of view no, from our uh, consideration the this fact that there is an experimental outcome on which x is working and giving you the particular value that aspect is hidden. For instance, suppose there is a furnace every 5 minutes you are measuring temperature of some particular section 
Okay, there are various possible temperatures. Okay, maybe a continuous range of temperatures, maybe certain discrete upper approximations and discrete range. Okay, they form a set of experiments. When you measure using a thermometer, the value that you are getting, that actually is a function. That is the this temperature. I mean, you know, it just takes one of those events, and this measurement rather measurement of temperature. It takes one of the I mean uh, states. Suppose the furnace has certain states, such as state one or state two or state three or state four. Each state is characterized by a particular temperature, and these uh, states form the events. The process of measuring the temperature actually by a thermometer or whatever. What it does, it picks up one of those states that is one of the events and then gives you a particular value. That value is a temperature say T. Unfortunately, in practice we will be taking T only, I mean we will be taking T as some kind of a variable. Okay. Then we measure temperature now what is T? Okay, T is so much degree centigrade. Next time what is T? Okay, the T is this much and like that. So, for us T will appear to be some kind of a variable, but actually and we in loosely call them random variable. But actually, along with each random variable, there is this interpretation of an experiment that goes on, and the random variable is nothing but a mapping of a particular event, so the particular experimental outcome rather, not even experimental outcome to a real number. I am pursuing real valued random variables to so a particular real number. Okay. Then uh, just to give an example, suppose you are uh, like I give an example of the furnace, but let me give another example to make this point clear. Suppose I take that uh, tossing a die experiment, a die has got 6 faces, let the faces be f 1, face 1, f 2, f 3, f 4, f 5, f 6, f 1 means the top face is marked with 1, f 2 means the top face marked with 2 and likewise. And each of the states, each of these faces has probability 1 by 6 because it is an unbiased die. All right. What do we do? We conduct an experiment, one of the faces show up, and based on what we have, suppose we generate a particular value, and we generate by some mechanism. In this case, the mechanism is that is, let me write it out. We have got six faces, a phi i from one to six. Okay, so any of the a phi will be each of the each a phi is a particular experimental outcome. So there are six outcomes. The total set is nothing but a set consisting of f one, f two, f three up to f six. What do we do? The moment a particular event takes place, particular outcomes takes place, say fi, we assign, we find out this variable x is equal to as 10 i, which means when f 1 takes place, that particular value that will be 10, if f 2 takes place, it will be 20, then 30, 40, 50, 60. So, every time you conduct this experiment, you get one particular value from that set 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Okay. So, in this case your uh, function, it maps each outcome, okay. there is a function which maps each of the outcome to a particular number f 1 to 10, f 2 to 20 and like that. That function actually is described like this, actually I should have written x as a function of i, because i is the event, but 
as I told you often we really do not I mean we just deal with this particular variable and often that mechanism of experiment and particular experimental outcomes and all that you know that remains hidden from us. That is why we most often I mean treat the variable as x itself rather than calling it at x of some event x of some experimental outcome i. All right. Then comes this issue. One particular notation, certain notations are important here. Now, what does it mean? We know x is a random variable. The x now what is what is x actually? That we know that there is a set S, it consists of all experimental outcomes set of outcomes A ok is. Now, with each outcome as I told you we associate I mean we have a function actually x should be strictly a function of this outcome that is on each outcome there is a function which works and gives you a number. So, actually it is not x it should be x of a, but loosely as I told you earlier we omit this dependence on a, we simply say x. In any case x then stands for a number which is associated with a particular outcome. Okay. For each outcome the corresponding x gives you one particular number and since these outcomes are occurring randomly that every time you perform an experiment you get some outcome or other the, the random the value that x takes okay, is also random because you at every trial or at every experiment you get some new value or different value. So, that values occur also numerical values also occur randomly that is why it is called random variable. Now, coming to this what does it mean capital X is a given number and when I say X less than equal to capital X and I put parenthesis what does it mean. Now, this notation we have to first make clear, but before that let, let us tell you this that in probability theory we often try to ask this question that okay, given a number capital X what is the probability that small x the random variable is less than equal to capital X. Now, as you know we have defined probability not on numbers not on x or capital X, but we have defined probability over events. There is a set of all possible outcomes then subsets of that set they form the events with each event we have a probability and we have given the axiomatic definition of probability already. So, events probability is always associated, associated with the events not with the number. But in probability theory or random variable theory, since we talk in terms of random variable where x is actually a function, but we do not you know I mean do not uh, show that functional form, but x, I mean just write x, but actually it means that there is some experimental outcome uh, upon which I mean and based on that outcome x takes some value and in that sense x is random ok. So, in that background question is what is the meaning of this or rather if I want to say that what is the probability what is the probability that random variable x is less than equal to capital X how to define it you, you understand my point. My point is so far probability the notion of probability has been defined on set that is events not on number. So, that means if you have a situation like this a condition that given to us like this that x is a random variable, but I mean it takes values less than equal to a given number capital X. This situation somehow we have to convert into the language of I mean into I mean equivalently into this event that is we have to somehow find an interpretation of this uh, situation in terms of the events that is sets or subsets. Then we can talk in terms of probability ok, because probability is not defined on these numbers, it is not defined on a variable x so far ok, it is defined only on sets. So, we defer. So, when you write this x less than equal to capital X, we actually mean an event and when I say probability of small x less than equal to capital X, it actually means probability of that particular event which is associated with this. Okay. Now, what is that event? That event means as you know 
the set consists of several outcomes with each outcome I have got a value for n variable x. Now, from all those outcomes now isolate only those for which the value that x takes is either equal to x capital X or less than capital X okay? and collect them. So, if that forms a subset of capital X which means it is an event okay? because it is a subset consisting of some outcomes. So, that means this is nothing but a subset of S having outcomes A or S so that X of A actually as I told you random variable X it is actually a function it takes the outcome and gives you a value. So, X of A is less than equal to capital X. So, I find out those outcomes only for which X takes values less than or equal to capital X. Set of those outcomes definitely is a subset of S and definitely is an event that has a probability. So, probability of small x less than or equal to capital X equivalently means probability of that event which event that consists of those outcomes for which X takes values less than or equal to capital X. Okay? Then Then sometimes we ask this question given two numbers x1 and x2, what is the probability of this? What is the probability p for probability? What is the probability of x lying within this less than or equal to x2 greater than or equal to x1? Again, this statement is nothing x less than or equal to x2 greater than or equal to x1. Okay, it is purely in terms of number and variable, two numbers x1, x2, and x is random variable that as such I mean I cannot apply probability on that, but I have to convert this condition into a condition involving events. I, I have to convert this condition into some event and on that event definitely we have got the notion of probability working. Now, this will imply the this is same as the probability of that event just a minute. this is equivalent to probability of this event. What is this event I will tell now? When I put curly bracket this becomes an event. Now, this is what is this event? This actually denotes an event. What is that event? It is set of rather I would say subset. with outcomes is so that the random variable is less than equal to it takes the value that is less than equal to x 2 greater than equal to x 1. That is from the given set S okay, you isolate you find out only those outcomes for which x takes values within this range x 1 to x 2, because with each outcome I have got some value associated as expressed by x, which is actually a function of this outcome. So, I am just again collecting some outcomes for which all those outcomes mind you, I am not leaving any, I am collecting all those outcomes or all those elements of the set A. So, that for each element that is for each outcome, if you for each of those outcomes, if you take the value of the random variable, you get a value within the range x 1 to x 2. But that is again a set of some outcomes okay, that is set of that is a subset of A which is an event and on an event we have a probably definition, definition of probability working. So, probability of x lie, lie, lying within this range capital X 2 and X 1 is same as probability of this event that is I mean probability of this event occurring that is I mean probability of occurring probability that some outcome occurs. So, that x of that outcome that is the random variable takes values within x 1 to x 2. Okay, there is a probability of that event. Okay. Similarly, if I say probability 
of say x equal to a, some number a. It means it is equivalent to probability of this event, again curly bracket, curly bracket stands for event here, x equal to a, where this event means x equal to a is a condition, but when I put within curly bracket, it means an event. Event means some sub subset of S, it, uh, it gives rise to a subset of S or it indicates a subset of S. What subset? That is such a subset of S with outcomes S so that x A is equal to A. Okay. Finally, formally we define the random variable like this. X is a random variable R V, R V stands for random variable if number 1, this event, this is an event for any, important is any given x, means you give me any number x and then you find out x less than equal to x within curly bracket means you try to look for some outcomes of S or those outcomes of S okay, for which the random variable takes value less than or equal to capital X, okay, less than or equal to capital X. Hmm. Clearly, that is an, I mean, this must, should be an event, that is we should really be able to find out such outcomes, so this must be an event. Okay. And number 2 is, the two things, probability of x taking value infinity and probability that should be equal to probability of taking value x value minus infinity both should be equal to 0. Okay. That is a formal definition of a random variable. Okay. That is all for today. Thank you.